Over the years, I've logged with several different types of tractor, from a tiny 13 horsepower VA case all the way up to an 80 horsepower Fiat Heston. Each tractor presented its own unique set of pros and cons. After working with this collection of machines in the bush, I've formed a pretty good idea of what I think makes a good logging tractor. Which tractor did I find to be the most useful? My answer might surprise you. It all started with the Heston, which was manufactured by Fiat. When I started the log cabin project, I didn't have a tractor of my own at the time, but my grandpa was kind enough to let me borrow his tractor on occasion before I was able to save up enough money to buy my own. And boy, what a beautiful tractor the 80 horsepower Heston is. For a tractor from the late 80s, it comes fully equipped. Powerful 80 horsepower diesel engine, four wheel drive, power steering, and a hefty front end loader. When the tires are fully loaded, the tractor weighs in at approximately 11,000 pounds. I don't believe there's anything that this juggernaut of a bush tractor can't lift, pull, or drive through. Honestly, I'm not even sure if this tractor would notice if it drove straight through the side of a barn. As far as I know, this tractor has never stalled out, been stuck, or met its match. On paper, the Heston seems like it would be the perfect bush tractor. However, it had two major drawbacks. First of all, it isn't very maneuverable. Sure, the power steering allows for featherlight turning, but that means nothing when the tractor is as wide and long as it is. With the loader attached, the tractor is at least 18 feet long. This makes it almost impossible to turn around within the dense cedar bush that we regularly work in. But forget turning around, there are many parts of the forest that we can't even access with a Heston, period. It's just too big. Since we log selectively, this is a big problem. As impressive as this tractor is, it's almost useless to us when it comes to logging in dense bush. We need a tractor that can follow us off the established trails to reach the individual trees we select for harvest. The Heston just isn't capable of doing that for us. The second drawback to this tractor is its price point. It's expensive for a bush tractor. Although it's 30 years old, most Heston 8066 DT models start at $10,000 US. For most small-scale operators, like myself, that's just too much money. Repairs and maintenance are naturally quite pricey too. A good bush tractor should be dependable and durable, while at the same time being reasonably cheap to run and fix. Although the Heston can be many things, cheap isn't one of them. At least not for the little league loggers like myself. When I had the chance to buy my own tractor, I decided to get something that was a complete opposite to the oversized and overpowered Heston. For approximately $450 US, I bought myself one of the smallest and cheapest tractors I could find. You're looking at a 1948 VA case. At 3,200 pounds, it's one-third the weight of the Heston, and it's one-sixth the power at 13 horsepower. 
it's also a fraction of the size. On paper, it's a very underwhelming tractor. No loader, no four-wheel drive, no power steering, no power anything, and barely any power at all. In fact, most modern riding mowers would give the poor case a run for its money in the horsepower and features department. However, the VA case does have some notable strengths. With its turn-on-a-dime steering, high ground clearance, and small stature, this tractor was built to drive in the dense bush. In fact, we could drive it anywhere we wanted without having to break a trail for it. All we had to do was carefully pick our path beforehand and weave it through the trees. This meant that the little case left almost zero footprint on the surrounding forest. If I could sum the VA case's strengths up into one word, it would be nimble. However, like the Heston, it too had some major drawbacks. Yes, it was nimble, and yes, it was inexpensive, but it was grossly underpowered. I could pull a few small cedar logs with it, or one larger cedar log, but that was about it. It couldn't handle anything over 500 pounds without repeatedly stalling. This ended up being a big problem for me, because I still needed to haul piles of field stone, heavy poplar logs, and entire boulders to the cabin site. Each load would easily total several thousand pounds. If my little tractor was barely capable of getting itself up an incline in anything more than second gear, then hauling heavier loads with it was laughable at best, even on level ground. Overall, the best way I can describe the little case is nimble, but gutless. So I ended up selling it and purchasing an international 1951 W4 McCormick for 700 American dollars. Like the VA case, it was pretty bare bones, but it had double the horsepower and it was about a thousand pounds heavier. This old W4 was the best of both worlds. It was a strong hauler, like the Heston, although not as powerful, and it was surprisingly agile, like the Case, although not quite as maneuverable. It was a good middle ground tractor, and it worked amazingly well for me. For the first time, I was able to reach most of the trees and rocks I needed and haul them out without any problems. The W4 hauled just about everything I asked it to. The only thing that it struggled to pull was this mammoth boulder, which is the biggest rock I have in my cabin foundation. Wow. But after throwing a heavy duty cable and pulley on it to help reduce the load, the tractor moved it with ease. In addition to its balanced power and agility, the W4 had other strengths that I enjoyed. 
For example, the gas engine always started without hesitation. Even in the dead of winter. Diesel engines, although more robust and economical, usually don't start up well in the winter time. Something else I enjoyed about the W4 is that it was surprisingly easy to steer, even though the wheel had to be manually turned. The VA case, which also had manual steering, was bad for something called steering wheel torque feedback, which happens when the front tires hit a stump, rut, or rock and torque the wheels to the side. The sudden turning of the tires will simultaneously and violently turn the steering wheel as well, often right out of the operator's hands, which can be painful, even dangerous. For some reason, the W4 was built in such a way that it almost never had issues with steering wheel torque feedback. Obviously, I appreciated that. For all the W4's strengths, it had a couple weaknesses. First of all, it had terrible ground clearance. Most of the W4 rode high enough to avoid getting hung up. However, the drawbar was ultra low to the ground, and it got hung up on everything. When the drawbar got stuck on something, which it often did, the back tires would immediately lose traction and I would be stranded. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent getting my tractor unstuck, all because the drawbar would catch a rock or the low side of a knoll or a chunk of ice. Yep, my tractor has been hung up on a chunk of ice before. It wasn't fun. Although the W4 was strong, nimble, and economical, its poor ground clearance became an issue far more than I care to admit. Finally, the W4, like the case, didn't have a three-point hitch. Having a three-point hitch is nice because it can be used to pick the end of a log up for skidding. This makes it much easier to pull the logs and keep them a little cleaner too. Since the W4 doesn't have a three-point hitch, it had to skid logs the hard way. After working with the Heston, Case, and W4, I formed a pretty clear picture in my mind of what would make an ideal bush tractor, at least in my set of conditions. Enter the 1961 Massey Ferguson 35. It's got a three-cylinder Perkins diesel engine, which have a great reputation. But you can ask me again what I think of my diesel engine once the winter rolls around and I try to start it. For its engine size, the tractor itself is pretty compact. It's under 10 feet in length, only 5 feet wide, and only 4.5 feet tall. In fact, I believe it's roughly the same dimensions as the tiny VA case. Although I do believe the Massey is shorter in height thanks to the seating position. On a side note, I found the case's seating position to be the worst. I always felt like I was seated too high up, as if someone had set a bar stool on top of the tractor and had me drive it from there. It just felt way too tipsy for my liking. Now, the W4 seating position was much better, being that it was lower, but at the same time it felt odd. That's because the seat dangles the driver right off the back end. It's almost as if the engineers who designed the tractor forgot to include a spot for the driver and only realized their mistake at the end, so they decided to just slap a seat onto the back end and call it a day. Anyway, my point is, the Massey's seating position is exactly where it needs to be, right between the back tires. Not on top of the tractor, not hanging off the back end, but down in the tractor. I appreciate the stability that brings. Anyway, the Massey is about the same size as the tiny case, only a little wider and a little shorter. It's also similar in weight, only 350 pounds heavier for a total of 3,550 pounds. The Massey is also just as nimble as the VA case. It has great ground clearance and can turn on a dime with its extremely tight turning radius of 9 feet. However, it's way more powerful. At 35 horsepower, the Massey is 50% more powerful than the W4 and almost three times more powerful than the Case.
To further sweeten the deal, the Maskey also has a three-point hitch. Finally, I'll be able to pick the ends of my logs off the ground when skidding them. Now, I know some of you are probably wondering why I haven't purchased a loader for any of my tractors. While a loader can be invaluable for most applications, I believe in our situation it would do us more harm than good. First of all, having a loader would make it more difficult to navigate the denser sections of bush. This was a big part of the Heston's problem. Secondly, without power steering, equipping a loader on my tractor would make it much harder to steer, and it would become next to impossible to steer if the bucket were to be carrying something. For that reason, loaders should only be used on tractors with power steering, at least in my opinion. Thirdly, loaders are pricey. They are also just one extra piece of equipment that could potentially break on me, usually at the worst possible time. Anyway, since I only bought the Massey 35 about a month ago, it's probably too soon to tell, but I think I just may have found my ideal bush tractor. It has enough power to put the W4 to shame, it's nimble enough to run circles with the case, it's compact enough to drive through the dense bush, and it has the ground clearance to drive over any type of terrain it will encounter out here. The only drawback of this tractor is that it's uncomfortable over the bumps, but the VA case and W4 were the same. The Heston was by far the smoothest of all the tractors, but that came as no big surprise. Anyway, I'm excited to put this Massey Ferguson 35 to the test. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, my friends.